Hey guys, Lighten here, and thank you for checking out what I have been calling Jew Lion Month. If this is the first time you've checked out a video, then thank you for joining me. If you have been watching all month, then today it's going to be the time where I talk about the final movie in the Lion King series as my poster falls to the floor. <laughs> I'll be talking about the Lion King one and a half and seeing if it's worth it. July and March. Some of you might be confused as The Lion King 2 has a definitive ending, so how can there be another movie in the series? Well, Lion King 1.5 or Lion King 3 Hakuna Matata if you live in Australia was released in 2004 as another direct to DVD sequel to a Disney film. This film is all focused on Timon and Pumbaa and how they actually were around during the first film, you just never saw them. It starts with Timon and Pumbaa watching the original Lion King in a very meta way before rewinding the film so far that it shows you what happened before the movie even started. We find Timon and the rest of his meerkat family being meerkats, digging tunnels, being scared of hyenas and eating bugs the meerkat way. Timon though is the black sheep of the family and causes tunnels to collapse on a daily basis. He's a troublemaker, a disgrace, and no one likes him as he just can't do anything right. He decides that he needs to go out and find himself, some kind of purpose, and he bumps into Rafiki, who tells him to go beyond what he sees to find Hakuna Matata. Along the way he meets Pumbaa and his search begins. Now he and Pumbaa are around for some major events of the first film and comedy ensues. So just how were they around? Will Timon find his Hakuna Matata? If I rewatch the original Lion King, will I see these guys in the background? All I know is that I better watch it quickly before the hyena comes. So the way Disney got away with another sequel to this movie is it being a prequel and a midquel, which I'm not sure is a real word, but it just means a movie set in between events of a previous movie. So like Bambi 2 and The Fox and the Hound 2 happen in the middle of the movie, like uh, Bambi 2, even though it's called a sequel, is set when uh, Bambi's still growing up. So it happens in the middle of the film, I'm calling it a midquel. Now, Timon and Pumbaa's adventure here is a prequel and a midquel, and I can't think of any other Disney movie that does this, so that makes it original, so at least, you know, some marks there, Disney. Another couple marks for Disney, as they got most of the original cast to reprise their roles. Timon and Pumbaa are played by Timon and Pumbaa from the movie, which is great. The uh, only exceptions here is Zazu, not played by Rowan Atkinson, but actually played by the guy that I forgot again, <laughs> who played him in Simba 2. Uh, sorry, Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Uh, also, uh, young Simba is in the film, and he is uh, replaced by a different child actor because... The child actor grew up makes sense but aside from those people everybody that is in the film reprises their role so nice work Disney the premise of the film being a backstory for Timon is actually based on a deleted scene from the Hakuna Matata song the original Lion King had a part saying why Timon was an outcast but it was cut for time and flow and so 10 years later they made a full film about it while this is a fine enough idea, the structure of the story is not something that I liked. It starts with Timon and Pumbaa watching The Lion King. This meta joke runs throughout the entire film. Many points throughout the story, they pause it to make jokes and to say things about what's happening in the movie or the situations that they are in. These jokes really break the flow of the movie more often than not, and it didn't need to be a part of the film. They could simply have started with Timon and his family troubles and then moved on from there. That would have been more than enough. So let's talk about the story of the film. Timon being an outcast is fairly evident from the original film, and now we get to find out why he is an outcast. It's because he's not very good at being a meerkat. Every other meerkat likes to dig tunnels, eat bugs, and uh, you know, search for hyenas and stuff, while he just can't do it. He tries to install a skylight into a tunnel, and I'm like, that's not the worst idea, because wouldn't it just be a hole to the surface, and meerkats, you know, make holes to the surface anyway? So I don't get how that was a bad idea and caused the entire cave structure to collapse. If anything, it should have been he was trying to dig a new type of tunnel, and then it collapsed everything. I don't know, it just seemed really weak for a motivation for him to be 
this meerkat that's not a very good meerkat. Then uh, he gets put on sentry duty, which is another meerkat trait, and instead he busts out into song and dance, which actually does feel very Timon, and because of that he doesn't see the me he doesn't see the hyenas come, and everybody gets like put in danger. Whilst the first part and the first the setup doesn't feel very Timon, the second part does. I think they should have changed his background to be more like the deleted scene, in that Timon doesn't like the hustle and bustle of the busy meerkat life. He is lazy and he daydreams all the time, and while we did get that daydream sequence in the final movie, the skylight thing just was not good. Another idea for his backstory is maybe he had a bad sense of smell, so he can't dig properly or be on sentry duty as both of those require smell. That could be explained why he could be next to the very pungent Pumbaa and not be affected by it. Early on in the film, Timon meets up with Pumbaa and a friendship, or should I say acquaintance ship, is formed. Now personally, I like when a story has some parts told from another perspective. It can be fun and change up the format. So this part of the film is something that I like. I mean, it's really forced, don't get me wrong. And I don't believe for a second that Timon and Pumbaa were actually at a lot of these places. Like honestly, they were there when Scar was singing his Be Prepared song and they didn't get seen or eaten. I, I don't fully believe it. But like I said, it's fun. And in my opinion, the really fun part is when they start raising Simba. This expanded upon part with Simba being the ultimate bachelor bro is a lot of fun and I think it should have been an entire movie in and of itself because it's a fairly good idea. We don't get to see much of Simba growing up, it's pretty much he gets there, we see the song Hakuna Matata by the end of the song he's grown up so there's a lot of opportunity here and I like that they did touch upon some of it and did say like some of the silly jokes and stuff that we all thought like walking over that bridge is like oh we're gonna, we've walked over this bridge so many times it's gonna you're like gonna grow up on here or something silly like that. That joke was so good apparently they even used it in the live action film but I digress. This section of the film is uh, one of the better sections in my opinion and it really should have been more expanded upon. I think the comedy here is good but they changed one fundamental part which I don't think they should have. Instead of Timon and Pumbaa being bachelors with Simba and growing up to be his ultimate bachelor bro like I keep joking about, they instead become his step-parents. Timon acts more like a stepfather than a bachelor bro. They, instead of hanging out and having fun and doing all silly things, which they still do, Timon is worried for Simba and is trying to take care of him like a father. This completely changes the dynamic of their relationship and not in a good way, especially when you watch the original and you see that he is just this bachelor guy hanging out with his bachelor friends. And then, like, it's just, like, they're just bros. It doesn't have this feeling of, we've raised you. Uh, it's more like we're best friends, and uh, it changes it a little bit here, and I don't think it's for the better. The start of the film has this idea that Timon left to find himself and to find Hakuna Matata, and it is the driving force of the film, and honestly, the message is good. He finds that his friends and family are his no worries. They make him happy, and that's fine, but oh boy, the start and the end of the film really feel like they don't connect in the middle. Timon is an outcast, and the only person that likes him is his mother, played by the same actress that does Marge Simpson. They have a nice relationship, and when he leaves, she goes after him, but not really. She doesn't turn up again until it's convenient for the plot and then they fight some hyenas together and for some reason Timon with his great ability of ruining tunnels helps defeat the hyenas. It feels like they just wanted to make a story but then they didn't have an idea for the start and end and they just wanted to tell two different stories which got fused together. The last thing I want to talk about is the friendship of Timon and Pumbaa. From the original film we get that they are best friends and that they may have been friends for years together like it feels like they've been together for a very long time but in this film it feels like they've only been friends for like a week maybe a month because the timeline is all wonky Timon and Pumbaa meet the day before Simba gets announced to the world and that's fine but that means they have not got any history together 
after they meet, they see Simba born, and then the next day, maybe a week or so, I'm not entirely sure, they're at the watering hole where they hear Just Can't Wait to be King, and it shows that they haven't been together very long. Now, maybe there's a bit of a time skip and they've actually been together for three months, but Honestly, it doesn't feel like that because Timon's like waking up and it feels like for the first time and he's like, oh man, the neighbors are so noisy and then they decide to leave. Uh, it, they probably wouldn't have done that if it was just one day that it was noisy out of three months. So, I don't know. Uh, and because of this, because they screw up the timeline, they screw up this friendship. By the time we get then to saving uh, Simba, they've been together, like I said, for maybe up to three months at the very very most and it just makes it feel like uh, their friendship is a lot more shallow it's not as together as it used to be the humor in the film is both hit and miss which is like all of timon and pumbaa in my opinion i laughed at some parts and i didn't like others like the long drawn out scene with timon picking his nose it just wasn't funny but I did enjoy the snail eating scene with, you know, Kid Simba, that was fun. The music in the film is a mix of some old songs and making fun of them, like the Circle of Life with Timon singing over the top of it and Can't Wait to Be King, as well as some original songs. The original songs are alright, with Digatana Dance being pretty catchy, which is the Quit Before the Hyena Comes song, and that's probably my favourite song of the entire film. The animation is very good, the quality is high with nice animation and great backdrops. Also that gag right at the end with all the other Disney characters was pretty funny and it made me try and guess all the different people that are there and maybe that's why they did it like a movie for the sake of that one joke. But I also get to reference Aladdin month for the final time in July and month because you should totally check out my Aladdin reviews because look who is in the audience. That's right, it's Aladdin. So uh, that's kind of strange. I don't get how all these Disney characters are here, but whatever, it's a bit of fun. In my opinion, the Lion King one and a half is not worth it. And not because it is a horrible film, far from it. I don't think it's worth it because it does not need to exist. I do not like how they changed Timon and Pumbaa. The fact that their friendship is so new and raw and they've only been friends for a little while and compared to the years upon years that you get from the original film just makes their friendship seem so much more shallow. The fact that Timon becomes a stepdad of sorts to Simba instead of just like his best friend bachelor bro changes their relationship again as well and not for the better. I think it detracts from it because it changes the way Simba grows up. I don't think this movie has a very good flow from start to finish where it feels like it is like two different films with the first part of the film with uh, you know Timon being a meerkat and trying to find his like way and then the middle part with all of the like what if scenarios which ruin up the timeline but they're a bit of fun so meh. And then the end of the film where they're like oh yeah we started the film with a different story we have to bring that back. <laughs> it just it just doesn't flow. Uh, and so because of that, I would never recommend this film to anybody. I would never say go and watch it. If you like it though, it is fine to like it. The humor is fun and the music is good, especially that Digatana song is uh, pretty, pretty catchy. I just don't think that it's worth it. I don't think it's, you know, a movie that you need to go out and see. And I don't think it's one of the worst Disney sequels out there, but I don't think it's a good one either. But tell me what you guys thought about The Lion King 1 and a half, or Lion King 3, Hakuna Matata, whatever you call it, back in your home country. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was any good? When I was a kid and I first saw this, I guess I was like 14 at the time when it came out, I enjoyed it a lot more than when I went back now because I didn't realize how different the relationship with Timon and Pumbaa was. I was just more having fun with the what if parts and I thought those were really good. I didn't even remember how the movie ended. That's how forgettable it was. Uh, I did remember the uh, Quick Before the Hyena song comes, uh, Quick Before the Hyena comes song. Uh, so I guess that was uh, a lasting part of it. Uh, yeah, so when I went back and watched it, I was expecting it to be better than I remembered, or maybe on par, but it just wasn't. So, tell me what you think about uh, in the comment section down below. Don't forget to psych and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I need to roll this up before I go. Oh.
always find it really hard to roll up a poster. Quick before the hyena comes. The only line I know from that song, aside from ch, 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 but you can't sing that, so I'll just say quick before the hyena. It's a catchy song. It's good. I hope my stupid leg doesn't come on the film. Can you hear that? I rolled my ankle and I'm in a f and I'm in a foot brace. <laughs> I hope you can't hear this silly thing. I've been trying to keep it really still, but uh, who knows? <laughs>